All right, good afternoon. Friday update, April 30th, 2021. Uh, a couple things. Let's start with the sergeant's test. I know there's a lot of skepticism about the fairness of a test that's going to cover five days. We've met with the city. They've given us a brief overview on how the test will be conducted. The reality is we do not have a legal leg to stand on in order to force how the test is facilitated. What we do have is assurances from Management and Labor Affairs that we will, we will be given a list for all five days of who's taking the test on which day they are so we can follow the results and make sure that it was, the numbers don't lie, that it wasn't a big number at the last day, higher than the first day. If that does occur, we'll address it then. The city is aware of that. The other way it's going to work is quite simply, the questions will not be exactly the same, but they are categorized in difficulty, one through five, basically. And you will be getting a level five question on day one, similar to a level five question on day five. There will be some nuanced differences in those questions, but as far as difficulty, they will be considered the same. Uh, I will be taking part two of the test myself, so I'll have a firsthand understanding of what it looks like. Um, and no, I'm not taking the promotion. Don't worry. Uh, with that being said, there is a current sergeant's list up right now that the city seems to refuse to want to promote from. Uh, it's very clear we are short sergeants, lieutenants. Our members, you know, many of them take this job to pr get promoted in their careers and, and you know, kind of move on to higher and bigger and better things. Uh, those members deserve the right to a promotion if they are on that list waiting. I was in a conversation with the monitor on Wednesday in the 6th District and some simple manpower numbers. Now, the 6th District is the gold plate for the city span and control unity and command and squad policing program. That's where it started over a year ago. We are 15 months in to this proposal that the city said they needed so bad according to the consent decree. The 6th District has an allotment of 460 officers, according to Commander Ben, but they're actually manpower staffed at 270. They're supposed to have 63 sergeants. They have 27. This is the gold plate standard for this program, and they can't even 15 months later manage to run that right. The numbers aren't much better in the 4th District or the 7th District where Union Command is also being uh, implemented. But this is a program the city, according to the consent decree, has to have implemented in every unit by January 31st of next year. That means they need a lot of sergeants to start anything even being to, to meet that threshold. Um, so if the test is going to be conducted in June, we were told you're looking at about 90 days roughly to score the tests, if not a little bit longer and then produce a list from there. We're looking at October or November before we have a list from this part two of the test. There is no way they are going to be able to promote enough sergeants in order to meet that consent decree deadline. And that's only to meet the deadline. That doesn't even mean the shortages they already have. So the simplest logical solution would be promote from within. Promote the list you already have. Patrol to sergeant, sergeant to lieutenant. Lieutenants are down also. And this is a joint feeling uh, and conversation I've had with the presidents of the Sergeants Association and the lieutenants. We all feel that promotions are warranted now more than ever, uh, but the city is refusing to do them. So we did a little research. And according to our list that we have, which is supposed to be the city's list, so if they have something different, I'd love to see it. But looking at the list we have, it seems that if you take the next 100 uh, officers that would become sergeants, they probably don't meet the demographics the city has tried so hard to change within the police department, especially when it comes to promotions the last five plus years. Um, by our calculations, it appears uh, there's probably over 70 percent white officers who would be promoted. And it's been very clear the department has made a push for black uh, you know, and Hispanic officers to not only join the department, but also be promoted. And we're not challenging that desire. But now when they're, you know, they've used merit to their advantage to make that a reality. And that's not a bad thing necessarily to have that diversity. But now when you don't have merit option anymore, 
and you have to take the people who scored accordingly in order, and you don't want to do it because they don't meet your agenda, it's disgusting. Um, shame on them, but like I said, if they have numbers that can challenge that uh, mindset, I would love for them to produce them because that's exactly how it looks to us here, and our members deserve better. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on how that kind of pans out. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Officer Rhonda Ward and Julius Givens, who saved 13-year-old uh, Swansea Rankin, who was shot in the back uh, and got him to the hospital in a hurry, heroically, uh, just last week. It, it was great police work. The irony is they are on page 21 of today's Chicago Sun-Times. When a police officer shoots somebody, it's front page news. You save someone's life, it's page 21. You know, even CBS the other day was doing a story uh, on the press conference for that. And when the, the parents were starting to, you know, express gratitude to the police officers and the police department for the great work, they cut away. They don't want any recognition for the great police work that our members do on a daily basis. Um, it, it, it's not even being hidden very well anymore. But I just wanted to give those two officers props for getting that young man to the hospital and help saving his life. Uh, St. Jude. So there's been a lot of complaints to the Lodge about St. Jude being canceled for the second year in a row. We have no control over how that is conducted, but I will tell you this right now. The FOP is going to sponsor a St. Jude parade May 16th, 9.30 a.m., same time, same location. The date's just going to be different. That's it. Um, we'll have some better details out as we go along here coming up Monday, but you can guarantee we are going to honor our fallen and have a St. Jude's March, whether the city and the department want to do it. Shame on them. We can pack officers in buses for riots. We can put you know officers in, in giant rooms waiting for... Uh, you know, a, a, a protest, we could have officers in training, but we can't have officers marching outdoor shoulder to shoulder even, let alone six feet apart. Um, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's shameful. Uh, our fallen deserve that honor, and the FOP is going to make sure that that happens. So, like I said, stay tuned. Monday or Tuesday, we should have some more information on uh, where parking is going to be and how we're going to facilitate all of that. But it's going to rain or shine, it's going to happen. May 19th is the next general membership meeting at noon. Please consider coming. I will tell you there's a national conference, if you don't know, in August. We are trying to get as many officers there to vote for that conference and have a little uh, say-so on what happens on a national level with the FOP and their board of directors. So if you would like to see how national politics play out on the FOP level, Please reach out to either Recording Secretary Rob Noseda or my assistant Kathy Spiewak and let them know that you're interested in going. We will be providing uh, bus, present, bus transportation from the Lodge to Indianapolis on August 19th, which is vote day, to and from. Uh, meals will be included. Again, if you're interested in partaking, we need names as soon as possible so we can have board approval for delegates that aren't field or unit or watch reps. Uh, with that being said, also keep in mind if there's any constitution or bylaw changes that you want to submit, they have to be in by the end of May, which will be actually close of business May 28th at uh, 8 p.m. if you have any suggestions for that. The contract. We have May 13th for a contract negotiation date. That's it. And we don't even know if that's going to be the full uh, core committee or if it's going to be specific to a topic. The city has absolutely disappeared in these conversations. Um, so I, I don't know what kind of games are being played right now, but they say they're urgent to get done, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, I will say 3653, where we're at with that in Springfield, is we have given a list of bullet points to politicians down there, some of them who were the original drafters of that bill with law enforcement concerns. Those concerns are being looked at, addressed, and they are tasked with figuring out the solutions for those problems. Uh, 
we'll know in the next couple of weeks here, or the next two weeks, realistically, if they're able to solve that problem or not. And if not, we will tender our full language for a fix for the bill, at least from the FOP chiefs and sheriffs perspective. It doesn't mean we're endorsing the bill. It doesn't mean we support the rest of the bill. These are just fixes that are day-to-day -day operation uh, situations for our members that we feel we need to address. And uh, that's kind of the goal for the last month of the spring session down in Springfield. There is also a memorial uh, this week coming up. The state police host a social function Wednesday night down in Springfield. And Thursday morning is the mass and ceremony for the uh, Springfield State Memorial. If you're interested in going, please contact the Lodge. We'll give you some more information uh, on Monday. With that being said, have a safe weekend, stay healthy, and uh, watch your back.